Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this Fellowship Friday. Uh, not on the Sin City Preacher's channel as we planned. Uh, let's thank Renee for giving us permission to stream this on her channel. Um, we tried getting this running earlier on my channel, but unfortunately, I am in trouble with YouTube. And uh, unless we get this resolved, I may not be able to host any live streams until January 16th. Uh, so I'm going to ask first off to everybody to pray for uh, this uh, to be resolved. Uh, we're basically, I'd say, innocent victims in this. So, uh, all right, but enough said about that. Let's get started since we took us a little while to work this out. Uh, I'm looking forward to the talking to everybody tonight. I have a subject in mind that I'm excited to talk about. So uh, first, let me ask uh, everybody say hi to the the, the, the the congregation. Let's start with uh, Sister Paula. Hey, everybody. Good to be here. Thank God for Renee. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God we can uh, have other options to stream this. So I look forward to it. Mm -hmm. All right. And we also have Sister Lisa with us. Want to say hi? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God, in the mighty name of King Jesus. Thank you for having me again, Brother Luke. Greetings to everyone on the panel and to everyone in the chat. Yes, Amen. Well, um, uh, I did um, text back and forth with um, Renee. Uh, she's given us permission to stream on her channel because of the technical problem on my channel with YouTube. Uh, but um, she's not going to be able to join us tonight because she has a, a plumbing problem going on in her house right now. So let's all pray for Renee also for if it's not if it's not plumbing in our body, our body's plumbing or something like that. It's then we, we've got plumbing problems in our home. And I was talking to somebody earlier today about about this. His life is just a series of problems to be solved. Okay. Um, and our brother Dave, I want to say hi to everybody. Hello, hello. Just want to say uh, welcome, chat. Hello to everybody on the panel. Um, as always, I hope you guys had a blessed week. Hope you guys have a blessed weekend of head. And uh, also remember, uh, you know, lift up Renee in prayer. And if you guys could please pray for tomorrow's outreach. Um, we are going back into the streets of Philadelphia. And we are praying for softened hearts to receive the gospel tomorrow. And so if you guys can lift that up as well, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, let me post a, a verse here and then we'll get into a, a subject. Uh, let me see. Okay, there you go. There's the, there's the verse that, oops, it won't let me post it. Why is it sometimes when I paste something in the chat here, if it's not, if it, maybe it's just too long, it's just First Peter three fifteen. So let me just let me just read it. Uh, it says, "Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear." <clears throat> and I I I put in for meekness and fear, uh, the words gentleness and respect. That's how I would interpret meekness and fear for this verse. But let's give an answer, but let's be gentle and respectful as we give our answers. Uh, so this is part of the, the subject that I wanted to talk about tonight. And let's call it the, the theme of this talk tonight. <clears throat> the question for everybody is, are you a dogmatist? I guess we ought to first define what dogmatist is, and the way I'm using the word. Um, dogma is, is a religious word, and uh, the dogmas of the church throughout history have been established through uh, ecumenical councils and uh, even debate and then voting to establish a dogma, a, a canon, a, a something that is established as the accepted position. And when you make it a dogma, you're not only saying this is our position, but a dogma is taking it all to a totally new level and saying, this is our position and you must agree. You can't, we will not tolerate 
other opinions on this particular question. That's a dogma. And uh, if you've been participating in the Church of the Eternally Secure very long, you know that we have four dogmas. Uh, first dogma is Jesus is eternal God Almighty. He's not a creature. He, 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 doesn't, he didn't have a beginning. He's eternal, God Almighty. Uh, the second dogma is that salvation is received as a gift, not earned by our works. Uh, faith alone in Christ alone, faith in his finished work and his promise of eternal life. And then the third dogma is that we can never lose our salvation for any reason. It's guaranteed. Um, <clears throat> and then the fourth dogma is there can never be a fourth dogma. <laughs> I, mean, I like saying that. That's my attempt at humor, but it, it really is true. When people come here and we ask you, let's agree on these three points, but let's make a fourth agreement that we're not going to try to impose any other dogmas on the congregation. That means that let's say that there's a hundred subjects in the Bible. Obviously, I don't know how many sub possible subjects there really are, but let's say there's a hundred and we're, we're saying we have three dogmas. That means that 97% of it, we're not going to be dogmatic. We, we're, we welcome differing opinions and not only because we want to consider all their opinions, but because we want to uh, uh, consider the possibility that maybe our opinion might be wrong and let's, let's discuss it. Let's try to figure it out together. So uh, that's the position on the Church of the Eternally Secure. And I wanted to bring the subject tonight about dogmatism. So let me first get everybody's just reaction to what I've said so far. Let's, let's start with uh, Sister Lisa. Well, uh, I certainly would agree with your opening statement with regard to um, the basics concerning the faith and what our foundation is on, most assuredly. I do believe, um, what, I can't recall the scripture right now that says, um, it's in the Old Covenant, if a person judges a matter before, it, before they hear it, to him it is folly. Uh, so I always try to remember that, at least to hear the person out. <laughs> and then if what they're saying contradicts the scriptures, attack it along those lines, should it need to be attacked. And I simply mean, when I say attacked, I mean deconstructed as far as what they've done and show people, this is what the scripture says, this is what they're saying. And now you be the judge of that, because if it's contradicting the scripture, then this is not something for us to follow. Um, as a matter of fact, I had just... Um, s said that something similar to someone who had uh, earlier in the week I was listening to a video and they just literally just dropped the false gospel message that salvation was not through faith in Christ alone and uh, it was um, also required works of some sort on the behalf of the believer uh, to prove that's what they always, you know, interject there that they're saved and so forth. And I just <laughs> was dogmatic uh, on the scriptures that talk about faith in Christ alone, Jesus himself speaking in many of those instances. So how are you going to contradict the living God who said that it is through belief in him that salvation is determined? So, you know, I, I absolutely agree with your opening statement. I, I try not to be dogmatic on other doctrines, although I'm, I might fail. <laughs> I'm human. I may fail at times because I can see certain things are clearly in the scripture. I certainly don't say then because somebody doesn't believe one of the non-essentials, as, as you call it, uh, that they're not saved. I just believe they're in error if the scripture uh, does show uh, for example, take, for example, the rapture. Not everyone believes in it, but it's a biblical doctrine. So my, my issue is always, I, I can understand if you don't understand it, but to say that it's not in the Bible or it's not a biblical doctrine is really <clears throat> an, a, a question, big fat question mark for me because it's clearly here. I don't have a problem with people saying I don't understand it or, or even that I don't believe it, but don't say it's not in here when it's in here that just bugs me <laughs> <laughs> all right hey thank you uh i want to get sister paula's a response to that but uh 
the, the verse I did have that in mind, uh, Sister Lisa, it's Proverbs 18, 13. He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. Uh, unfortunately, though, I found that uh, many of these uh, uh, commands or dictates or uh, admonishments that we find in the scriptures, uh, man's natural default is the exact opposite. The one that always comes to my mind is James says, be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to anger. But our natural or the reality for everybody really is where we're slow to listen, quick to speak and quick to anger, unfortunately. So, uh, Sister uh, Paula, uh, give me your thoughts on what Lisa and I both said and this this verse in, in Proverbs. Um, well, I liked what both of you said, and I pretty much agree with it. Um, yeah, the Proverbs verse is powerful, I think, because I think that's what most of us do. When we hear something that goes against what we already believe, it's, um, it's actually, uh, it's, it's cognitive dissonance is one way they explain how it is, but it's also... Um, something called the Semmelweis reflex. And Dr. Semmelweis was a guy in Hungary, I think, in the mid-1800s. And he, they had a high mortality rate of babies and mothers dying in his hospital. And he decided to uh, make it a rule that everybody had to wash their hands after they went from a dead body to a birthing mother. And they thought he was crazy and his contemporaries went against him and tried to put him in a sa an insane asylum. But his uh, employees had to abide by his rules. And they eventually saw that the mortality rate in his hospital plummeted. And unfortunately, his contemporaries won and he was sentenced to an insane asylum. And only a few years later did Louis Pasteur actually discover germs and the germ theory came out and then it became standard that you washed your hands between patient to patient so now what they say when something goes against what you already believe to reach to be true they say it's uh the semmelweis reflex named after him which i always think when i think of that verse um and i agree with the i agree with the three essentials <laughs> I did at first agree with the last one that you mentioned because I liked it. It sounds good. But I actually have met people who do agree with all three of those. And strangely, everything else they believe kind of doesn't really line up with scripture. So I think it's a good um, starting point, definitely. Uh, but you know, you can have someone say maybe that they believe those three essentials, but they don't believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that's like, oh, well, that just threw a monkey wrench into mm -hmm. my thinking. Mm -hmm. But I do like it and I do stick with it. Jesus, the way, mm -hmm. the truth and the life, the only way mm -hmm. he's God and he gives eternal life forever. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Well, I want to get uh, Brother Dave's thoughts, but uh, let, let me say that um, there are uh, many other questions about bi the Bible and about theology that uh, I have opinions on. And my opinion on it, um, let's say that my opinions range from certainty to confidence to not so sure to I don't have any clue. Uh, it, 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 you'd ask me every time you ask me about a subject, you're gonna. Uh, it might fall into any one of those categories in terms of how convinced I am that I got to understand it right. So, but but even the positions I hold that I feel like I'm I'm certain on this one. I'll give you an example. I'm certain about eternal torment is wrong, uh, and that the, the the lost perish. They're not tortured forever. I'm certain about that. I've I, I've studied it inside, outside, upside down for years. However. Even though I, uh, I'm even offended when someone tells me that they believe in eternal torment. I'm offended f uh, for God because I, I consider it to be insulting to represent the God of the Bible in that way. Uh, some psychotic, evil torturer. 
So, so that's how I see it. But am I going to disfellowship someone or separate over it? Uh, no, I just have to, you know, bite my lip and, and put up with it because I don't want uh, every dogma. By the way, I, uh, we got in a conversation about this with uh, someone recently one-on-one uh, um, -on, -one on the phone and, and um, trying to get, find out, what, well, if you're going to have a fourth dogma, what would it be? And it made me think. But uh, what my conclusion is that every dogma we add uh, is is uh, going to exclude another percentage of the, the the congregation because if we said let's we picked any a fourth dogma and said this is also something that we uh, will not tolerate other opinions well you're going to have some people in the congregation that disagree so we have they'll they'd have to be excluded now I'm not for ecumenicalism and in terms of hey everybody's welcome uh, no matter what uh, everybody's welcome as long as they agree with these three essentials and they'll give liberty on the others and they'll have good manners and be polite. That's all. That's all that we really ask. But every time we impose another dogma, we're going to be excluding an, uh, another faction uh, or fraction of the, the congregation. And, and that's why we, the result of this is over 30,000 uh, sects or denominations of Christianity. Uh, okay, brother, brother Dave, what do you say about what we said so far? Well, for me, it's, 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 you know, narrowed down to just a few. I mean, there's, there are reasons I, I'm, <laughs> I have no idea why there's thousands of different denominations other than, you know, everybody keeps splitting over hairs, but you know, I, for me, it's easy. I'm easy going, uh, you know, the core foundational truths. I mean, <laughs> salvation by grace alone through faith alone and Christ alone, <laughs> not of works and nobody can boast, you know, Jesus Christ, virgin birth, <laughs> Jesus Christ, resurrection, and that Jesus Christ is, is from everlasting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those those simple core things that, that you already explained is fine with me. Everything else I consider to be a, a secondary issue. Mm -hmm. I know. I know you do. Uh, everybody here does. We've, we've been emphasizing this for two years. <laughs> Right, right. So, I mean, for me, it's like, it's okay if, like, somebody says, you know, I believe in pre-trib. Then I say, okay, well, that's great. I believe in a, you know, a post-trib pre-wrath, or, or I may lean that way. You know, I, I, I just believe in extending, uh, you know, liberty, a room to agree to disagree on certain things because, you know, we're all learning differently. We're all in different places. And, okay. you know, some things, like you said, you'll tolerate. Some things you can't tolerate. I, I can't get on board with ecumenicalism. Uh, never will. I know that that you know Jesus warned that we'd be hated for His name's sake, not accepted. And so, yeah, there's some things like you know with hell, whether it's uh you know eternal torment or whether it's annihilation, uh, whatever it is, you know, we'll find out when we get there. But I know that there's there's a lot of people with differing views on on certain uh, subjects. But as long as those subjects don't cross over into the core foundations, I, I'm good with it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I want to pose. Uh... Uh, something else to the, to the group uh, next, but um, um, we, we we really want to um, have a, a congregation that understands who Jesus is and how you get saved. This, if I was going to even simplify it further, do, do you know, do you know who he is and do you know how to get saved? That's really what we're the, the most important thing is. If we can't get that right, and then I think that's that's uh, kind of a, uh, even condensing further these three core doctrines, who is he and how do you get saved? But um, on all these other things, uh, the question I have is how willing are we to use this Proverbs verse uh, of, um, where is it? Uh, he that answereth the matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. Uh, uh, I know that um, over the years, I've gotten in many private conversations. I still, every day, I'm having private conversations with with, uh, with people about the Bible and, and theology. Uh, and uh, I enjoy that, that time. Every, just about every day, um, I'm talking to somebody about it. And a lot of times, we disagree on some things, but uh, that's when the conversation gets interesting for me. But what I'm seeing is um, 
uh, a failure in this regard that uh, people are not willing to listen. And uh, as James says, again, uh, be, be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to anger. Uh, but I don't see people are quick to listen. I, I see people are quick to to ignore and argue and, and tune them out and, 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 and then resort to name calling and, and d dividing. So um, it, it, does anybody have any idea how we could possibly get people to have, adopt the attitude better? Uh, being eager to listen to different viewpoints in, 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 that are contrary to theirs. How can we possibly achieve that? Well, if I may interject, uh, I would say by example, because, and, and it's never going to be everyone. Everyone's not going to take that position based on their personality or based on their level of maturity, either in the scripture or as a person. But I think that the more that you watch other believers practice that and encourage that, then it'll become more accepted. And um, we may not be as dogmatic on the non-essentials and that it will understand that it is okay to agree to disagree with regard to certain things. I do also reserve to hold the position that we should not agree with people who are in doctrinal error when the scripture is clear, but we should still love the brother or the sister and, and just say, hey, I can't, I can't go with you down that road on that one because this is what I believe according to the scripture. But if we don't take that position, again, with non-essentials, then we risk alienating everyone, really. I mean, because as long as I've been living in the short little time I've been on this earth, uh... I don't agree with every believer, even if I think they're wonderful beliefs. I don't agree with them on every doctrine. So that if I were to say, oh, because I don't believe with you on this particular doctrine, I can't fellowship with you, I'd have no one to talk to. It'd be a very lonely place. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I've expressed that same point like this. Uh, getting back to this 100 number, uh, let's say that we, we made up a questionnaire, 100 questions about the Bible, and, and, and every question was true, false. So a hundred possible true false answers. And then we asked everybody in the congregation, everybody here in the panel, matter of fact, everybody on all YouTube land, everybody answer these true false questions. And then you compare. I, I'm pretty confident that you're gonna have a hard time finding even one person that their question, their answers completely match yours a hundred percent. If you talk, I've discovered that if you talk theology with anybody long enough, you're going to uncover some area of disagreement. So the, the question uh, I have for everybody is, what, how are we going to deal with these disagreements? Uh, and that's why here's a here's a quote that I uh, I don't I don't know who to credit for this, but I've said it many times over the years. It's uh, remember why we debate. We have nothing to lose but the errors we hold. But who but a stubborn fool would hold on to errors? Once they've been exposed, author unknown. Uh, um, and this, this uh, principle has served me well uh, in that uh, it, it, when, when I say debate, it's not, I, I'm not even trying to win the debate. I'm not trying to win an argument, uh, uh, but we're exchanging ideas, even arguing back and forth. But I don't say arguing in, in terms of uh, our tempers uh, rising, but arguing in just that we're, we're trying to show each other uh, our various positions and, and even show the error of the other person is okay. But the question is, can we do it in a polite, respectful manner? And I found that I've been able to do that over the years with numerous people behind the scenes. And, and uh, then when, I, when my error has been exposed, when the, when the other person showed me uh, how I was wrong, I would not be, as it says in this quote here, be a stubborn fool and hold on to an error once I've been proven wrong. Um, so I guess my next question for the panelists and everybody in the congregation now is, uh, have you ever engaged like that and then found that someone did show that you were wrong and you've actually changed the position? I, I made a video sometime this last year. I think it's titled 
uh, eight times I changed my mind. Um, uh, here on the panel, tell me if you ever have, tell me where you've t discussed theology with someone and, and they convinced you you're wrong and you changed your position. Oh, are you calling on us? Uh, I'm not calling because I don't know if anybody applies to anybody, but but go ahead, Paula, let's, let me ask you, go ahead. Yeah, there was one I can remember. Um, when I first read the Bible, uh, I was reading the New Defenders version, which has annotations by Henry Morris, and it's basically half his mm -hmm. annotations, half the Bible. So it's a, it's a lot. And I read it because he gives a lot of um, background information about the people, the Jews, what they, you know, the customs and stuff at the time. And I just took what he said, like he sounded like he knew what he was talking about. And he was teaching about Abraham's bosom being a place. And so I just accepted it because I read the story. It sounded good. He had a bunch of different verses that kind of went with that. And so I wrote them down in the Bible. And then several years later, after I had gotten saved, I was in a conversation on Facebook with somebody. And it started over Job and the sons of men coming to Job. And we were arguing over who the sons of men were. But somehow he showed me what I was thinking was wrong. And I was like, wait a minute. So I went back and I saw the notes. I read what Henry Morris said. And and I actually changed my mind. Um, and I was like, kind of shocked at the time because when I read Henry Morris's explanation, and I'm not getting on to the man, I, I don't even <laughs> know him. Uh, when I read his explanations, it made sense. But then when someone asked me more questions, uh, it started to fall apart. So then I just changed my mind on it. But I, you know, if someone else comes to me with different information and different scripture to look at, I am fluid when it comes to that. I mean, I'll go what with what the scripture says. I don't have any pet doctrines other than salvation is the only thing I would be dogmatic on, uh, like we were talking about in the last question. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I was I believed every lie you can believe in the world before I came to God. I, I don't want him to be a certain way. I don't want the scripture to say a certain thing, you know, so uh, I love it. I love going back and forth with people. And um, the way to do that, you know, Lisa, she, she took my answer. It's to do it by example, because sometimes it is difficult. Sometimes you realize that y you are kind of getting a little bit emotional trying to defend your position, but why? You know, does it prop up something else you believe? Do you see it crumbling in certain areas? I don't know. But we shouldn't get upset about what other people see in scripture. We should want to talk about it. I mean, it's so complex. The Bible is so complex. And that's how we learn and grow. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, at least was right. I say we do by example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um I will, uh, before we get uh, more answer from uh, uh, Lisa and Dave, um, the, uh, as I said, my, my grievance is that, um, uh, I'll express it this way. I, I, my, from my experience, people who are baby Christians are pretty easy to get along with. Uh, they, they they understand who Jesus is. They know how they how to get saved, and they're just happy and 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 everything's no problems. But when they start taking their Bible studies seriously, and I'm not saying they shouldn't. I we we should <laughs> look. Uh, I, I would never say don't study the Bible, but uh, when people do decide they're going to really start studying the Bible, it usually takes about a year or two for them to start accumulating it one dogma after another. They, they either have a pet teacher that they uh, consider to be infallible, or they, they think that the Holy Spirit's revealing truths to them that are, they couldn't possibly be wrong. And then they not only are 
convinced they got it figured out, but then want to impose that as a dogma on others. So uh, I find it very unfortunate, and I think that it's almost inevitable. If you have not formed some extra dogmas, then you're a rare breed. But so my question, though, to, to um, Lisa next is, uh, uh, have you uh, had any positions where you've had this kind of dialogue and someone showed you you were wrong and you've changed your position? Well, Brother Luke, I've been thinking about that for a while now since you asked this question. And uh, the more I think about it, I mean, one time I thought I was wrong, but then I found out I was right. So actually, I'm making a joke, but oh, no. <laughs> I, I probably, I, I've probably lost count through the years of times that I have repented. Let's use the word in the right, in the right definition uh repented different ideas and concepts um uh, i'm certainly not gonna mention any of them right now because we might start a war <laughs> in ah. the chat room but uh <laughs> and uh and maybe even on the panel i don't know but you, you kind of have to feel people out with certain things especially if they're non-essentials as we said because usually the person who is wrong on the core of who Jesus is and what he has done for us and eternal security. We're going to know that almost right away with, within listening to them for just a few moments. So they're, they're always, the devil always got to tell on himself, you're going, you're going to find out where they're coming from on that. But the other stuff, it, it requires getting to know somebody about. I mean, everybody doesn't wear all of their beliefs on one sleeve or the other or on a T-shirt that says, here's all the things I believe. So you have to get to know the person to discover those things that you may not have in common necessarily according to the scripture. Uh, I was kind of thinking about how in my family, we, I have a, a, a brother who is just a hardcore particular football team fan. I mean, he's nuts about this particular team. Uh, and we all just kind of roll our eyes when it comes to it because he thinks they're the best team in the NFL. And then everybody else who has their own team thinks their team is, the, you know, and it's kind of to me on like the non-essentials. It's kind of like that. We should be able to discuss it, talk about it, laugh about it. He'll make his points and why he thinks that's the best team. Somebody else will come along and say, this is why this is the best team. You know, and it, it's not anything that we take so seriously because, again, this is not a perfect example. We're only talking about football teams, which is just entertainment anyway. But the, the concept of when it comes to the scripture, as Sister Paula was saying, that you, I want to be right. Not because I'm right, because I want to be right with the scripture. I want to be right according to the scripture. I want to be led and guided into all truth. Truth is my agenda, not Lisa's right. I really don't care about that. I want, if I want Lisa to be right, it's to be in agreement with the scripture because I want to agree with Christ and I want to follow Christ. And I certainly don't want to lead anybody else in the wrong direction. So that's why I find it imperative to, <laughs> Sister Bible literalist said, go Buckeyes, uh, to fight about things that. I, I want to know the truth about if if anything I'm fighting at getting at the truth, but not I don't want to come against another person save if they're leading people in the wrong direction. We're supposed to warn warn according to the scripture. So it's always in that context. If if I'm gonna uh fight and die, figuratively speaking, on a hill for something, it's gonna be in defense of the truth. But not, you know, like I said, I don't want to attack people. That's why most of the time I don't even I don't call anybody out on my channel in particular. There's been some few exceptions to that. But it's not to go attacking other channels or anything like that. That's not my thing. That's not what I do. I don't particularly like it when other people do it. I'm like, let's just attack the doctrine because then when you hear the doctrine, it doesn't matter who's saying it you'll recognize it and, and you'll leave it alone once it's been, as I said, deconstructed according to the scripture to show that that's false. Hmm. Okay. All right. I, uh, brother Dave, uh, the, the question is, have you changed your mind uh, on any theological positions over the years? How did that happen? If, if so, and, and also have you, uh, I had the same kind of experience and conclusion that I have, that that 
uh, when people are baby Christians, you don't have dogmatism as a problem, but the more they, if they start taking their theology seriously and really studying the Bible, it doesn't take long for them to form dogmas and, and that every dogma causes more division. Uh, your thoughts on that, Dave? Absolutely, yes. I've I've had several times where I thought that, you know, I had got a certain understanding or revelation in the scripture on something and, you know, uh, ran it through some pastors or some brethren and uh, really prayed and considered on it. And then I began to, uh, you know, see it in a different light. And I've, I've changed my view on, on some things uh, throughout my walk, of course. And as far as the new believers, uh, man, it, you know, the new believers these days have it really rough uh, because they are, you know, even when they get saved and they begin to grasp anything, they are literally bombarded with just winds and winds and winds of different doctrines um, and a lot of cults out there too. And so they got to sift through so much nonsense and so much doctrine and they got to listen, it's this walk is not for the faint. Like they've got to really be dedicated to seek God's word. If they want the truth, if they're hungry for Jesus, if they're hungry for the truth, they're going to have to sift through a lot of junk to uh to be able to understand themselves what i mean by that is so that they every new believer has a tendency to become a parrot and that is like okay well this sounds good to me or they agree with it this group agrees with it so i'll just learn as much as i can by what they say and i'll just parrot it to everyone else well after a while as you get serious in your walk you're gonna have to really dedicate yourself and diligently read and study the bible yourself or you'll never know for yourself you know what i mean and so when that when that process begins to occur man it's rough you'll get hit it's like a crashing crashing waves like ephesians says and it's like pounding you this hebrew roots or you know calvinism arminianism this or that or this doctrine this theology and you got to sift through and if you're not diligently seeking the scripture asking god for wisdom you know you can easily become a parrot and get caught up in it and it's, so it's best to just Seek God for wisdom and, and keep your nose in that book. And and there's nothing wrong with that. It, it's like, you know, spiritual food. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, I, I've uh, I, I've concluded a long time ago that the the biggest problem in the church is dogmatism. Now, I, the biggest problem in what what I call Christendom is the false gospel and the false Jesus. Now, when I say Christendom, I mean uh, all the people in the world who identify themselves as some kind of a Christian. Um, but if you if you uh, talk to them, if you ask them the diagnostic questions, um, are you certain you're going to go to heaven? And if so, why? You'll quickly learn that probably 90% of all of Christendom do not believe in the gospel. Uh, they believe in works for salvation. So, so that, that's the biggest problem in Christendom. But in, even in the true church, uh, the, 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 the collection of all the real believers, we still have this serious problem. And this dogmatism is, is caused, uh, I mean, just, I, you have the problem locally, but on, on YouTube and on the internet, it's really obvious. People dividing and wanting to correct everybody and, and, and rebuke everybody and expose everybody over everything everything possible. Now, again, I'm all for defending and, and uh, the, the core doctrines, but uh, there's, there's probably a, a hundred different things that they're putting you under the microscope and, and scrutinizing and straining gnats and, and uh, just even sometimes it's not even a disagreement on a doctrine. It's, it's, it's a nuance or a semantics. You're not choosing, you're not using exactly the words they want you to use to explain it. So that's how, how bad it can, can get. So I'm bringing this up because I do think it's the biggest problem in the church is people forming all these dogmas and trying to impose that and, and, and correct and, and, and uh, expose uh, everybody else. Um, here's another one for everybody to think about. I, I don't know who said it. When an honestly mistaken man learns the truth, he will either no longer be mistaken or he will cease to be honest. I think that's profound. And so uh, th that's the kind of question that should make us uh, all evaluate ourselves. Can, can we 
say this about ourselves. Con congregation, everybody, answer it to you privately if you want. But uh, do you have the attitude that you want to hear out the, the people who disagree with you on non-essentials? Uh, are you willing to listen? And uh, that's the first step. When I say listen, I mean, okay, here are all my positions. I'm going to put them over there, set them aside temporarily while I listen to Lisa tell me about some of these positions she holds that she says even might disturb some of us. Uh, well, now you got me interested. I want to hear, uh, not right now, seriously, but uh, I, that's when I get curious. And I, I often wonder why am I the only one that's curious? Uh, or why aren't big, there so big. many people? What's that? Oh, I was, I'm sorry, Brother Luke. I was going to say one of the reasons that people don't throw their, ide <laughs> their ideas out there is because they don't want to be attacked as being a heretic. Again, we're talking about non-essentials. Nobody attacking the deity of Christ and eternal security and his payment for our sin. We're talking about all the other things. If someone even wants to question an idea or a concept and explore something, uh, and talk about it, even just for the sake of playing oh, devil's advocate on something. I mean, you run the risk of somebody recording that and then playing it totally out of context and then trying to say that you actually hold that view and making you out to be this weird heretic or you get attacked because people came in on a portion of the conversation and didn't hear the whole thing didn't bother to listen to the whole video they just hear the premise that you're making which again you mm -hmm. may just may make an argument and they run off and again they are accusing you of all kind of stuff that it's not even a position you necessarily hold maybe you're just thinking about something you want to talk about it uh, if we were to talk about certain things that are non-essentials or core doctrine in the scripture um, for example people want to fight over the gap theory between genesis 1 1 and genesis 1 2 did something transpire and so uh you know there are those that say no it's actually six literal days with us and they want to fight over that and if you say anything different than that then they want to write you off as a believer and if you hold to uh, the gap theory and uh, you contradict uh, them or vice versa, then they're ready to write you off as not even being a believer. And it's just it's kind of it's kind of silly. Yeah, well, here's the problem. Uh, I, that is a re reality. Uh, you're not exaggerating the problem. Um, and when I f first got on YouTube 11 years ago, uh, the first couple of years, all my best friends were Paul only -ists. and we, I, we, we, we aligned ourselves because we, we both believed the gospel, uh, no works. Um, so in that way, I admired them and loved them and, and supported them. But the more I learned about their position about only Paul's letters and nothing else and, and all, and learned exactly what it was, I recognized the problem and I had to make a decision at that time. Uh, would I say publicly that they're wrong and I just might state a different viewpoint? Or, well, I kept my mouth shut for a while, but I, I finally reached the conclusion that for me, truth, in this case, uh, I think it was quite an important proof, uh, quite an important uh, uh, truth. Uh, it was more Trump's uh, um, popularity. I knew I was going to lose all my closest friends if I publicly disagreed with them on this. But... I decided that truth was more important. And that's why I would say, I can understand Lisa, if you wanna not say anything. A lot of people, they're, they are intimidated because they, they are afraid of the backlash, but we should be free. That's what I'm trying to get across. We should be free to express all of our viewpoints on non-essentials and have courteous conversations and try to, okay, we disagree. Well. That means that either one of us right, one of us is wrong, or maybe both of us are wrong. Let's talk about it and try to figure out. And that's pretty much what we have here in CES, Church of the Eternally Secure, and on Talk and Doctrine. These are the principles at play. And uh, I, I said in the um, beginning, 
uh, two years ago that this whole thing was an experiment that was doomed to failure. At some point, we'll divide over something. And here it is about two years later, and we're going strong, and I'm confident that we will last. Matthias said to me, he says, Luke, it's not an experiment any longer. It's a blueprint. So I'm, I'm hoping that other people will adopt this and say, let's have the attitude that you don't have to be afraid or intimidated to express any of your theological viewpoints. We all agree who Jesus is and how to get saved. So let's not be intimidated and be, and you're, you can't say what you think about other things for fear that there's going to be some expose done because they, someone is elevating that doctrine to a, a, such a level of importance that it, they have to divide over it and expose. Uh, Brother Dave, reactions. Well, I mean, I agree. And, you know, that's that's the way to do it. And, and I actually, from my experience in my walk, you know, when I come across somebody with a differing view, I like to, you know, go over the scriptures as iron sharpens iron. I like to see where they're getting this understanding, how they're getting this understanding, what do they think the context is. I like to go back and forth and find out why people are thinking what they're thinking and, 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 you know, through the scripture, what makes them think that way. And I like to share, you know, the same uh, way on my end. And, and like you said, try to reason with one another and who knows, maybe we're both wrong. Uh, maybe you can show me something that I haven't uh, thought about. Maybe I can show you something you haven't thought about. And, and we should be able to do that, you know, respectfully as brethren. Yeah. Yeah, I, I will say that even in the chat room now, I'm seeing someone use this word heresy. And, and, um, and, and if we if we look at, uh, you know, church history and use the, the theological terminology that's been uh, that, that apply to this, you have what's called orthodoxy. And that orthodoxy is pretty much that's the majority viewpoint or the traditional viewpoint. And it, it was established through say ecumenical councils and discussion and then they, they came to a conclusion and, and expect everybody to agree uh and so there's many positions in theology that have been established and it's traditional uh, i believe and that we should be very very slow and cautious moving out of orthodoxy or majority or traditional viewpoints uh, every time i've changed my mind on any subject it's always taken me a year or more of careful private debates behind the scenes um, uh, because I'm not going to just, you know, there's even a verse that says, don't be cast about with, with every wind of doctrine, I think. So you, you want to be very slow and deliberate, but you also want to be willing to, to listen just in case you're wrong. I mean, if I'm wrong, I don't want to remain wrong. Uh, so I'd ask, uh, rather than use the word heresies on non-essentials, uh, the better word uh, that I would say is, is uh, uh, we should be using is heterodoxy. Uh, that just means that, okay, we, we someone holds a position that's not the majority or the traditional viewpoint. Um, that I reserve the word heresy for what I call damnable heresies, uh, and those that is they're wrong about who Jesus is. They're wrong about how to get saved. That's how I would I would I would hold back and. And, and, and reserve that instead of calling everybody heretics who disagrees on, you know, all these uh, non-essentials. Uh, uh, Sister Paula, what's your thoughts? Uh, but also, I want to ask the chat room here uh, the same question I've asked the panelists. Can you tell me any time that you've changed your mind on any of these, uh, uh, any doctrines over the years because of you've had a conversation with someone and someone has persuaded you and you've changed your mind? So if you if you've done that in the chat room, let us know. You don't even have to say what the what the doctrine is if you don't want. But if you change your mind, let us know. And uh, if you haven't ever changed your mind on something, then it's good to ask yourself the question: Well, why not? Because you think you think you got everything in the Bible figured out one hundred percent correctly. I think that's kind of egotistical if, to assume that, uh, Sister Paul. Um. Well, when you guys were talking, I was thinking about the church that we went to. Uh, we found this church after a year and a half of trying to find a church that was preaching the truth. And we really liked them. We really liked the people. Um, we ended up being there for about three years. And 
towards the end of our going there, um, we were getting a lot of um, I don't I don't know the word um, bad feedback feedback from people because we were being accused by only one couple of uh, sowing discord simply because we would go to church and and talk about the Bible. If something we said went against what the preacher preached, even if it was not salvific, like the whole post-trib, pre-trib debate, um, you know, we wouldn't talk about that because we were told that that was apparently a sensitive spot. So we would, we decided, okay, we, we just won't talk about that. But then when you try to engage other people and just talk about what you've read recently and what their take is on it and what they think about it, um, a lot of these doctrines or subjects overlap when you're talking about the Bible. And, um, at the end of it, like when this couple said that they that we were sowing discord by talking, just having conversations about the Bible, it literally made my stomach sick. It made me sick to think that they thought that we were trying to go in there and change everybody's minds when really we just wanted to talk about that. It's very unusual for me because I didn't, ra I was not raised in the church, and I realized that church is not the best place to talk about the Bible. And that that's so that was so sad to me, you know, and I I prayed about it for a really long time. I prayed for God to bring us another church. And then you started the Church of the Eternally Secure not too long after that. So um I thank God for this venue and that we can discuss these things and maybe um Maybe the reason we got the reaction in the church was because of this idea of us all being of one mind. You know how the Bible talks about that. Um, I think maybe we're taking it a little too far and having a hive mentality and no individual thought outside of that, sort of to show our allegiance with a pastor or something. Um, but really, I, I find that I don't grow like that. And I love talking about God. I love hearing other people's stories about God. Um, it, it, that's what's fun for me. And um, so, yeah, I kind of get it. Uh, maybe they, maybe you're getting, when you talk about stuff or just want to challenge, not even challenge, but discuss, you know, a, a different way of looking at scripture. Um, you know, and some people get really upset even by questioning it. And I just, I think that's a shame. So, um, mm -hmm. all right. Thanks. I, uh, I'm wondering if anybody thinks I'm overstating this problem. Uh, Dave or, or, or Lisa, uh, I, I've made the claim that the biggest problem in the church is dogmatism. And, and as I've defined it, a dogmatism is, is forming a doctrine that, and, and saying that um, uh, I am so certain this is correct and it, it is so important that you have to agree or else. Uh, that's, that's dogmatism. And uh, um, why, why is everybody not getting along uh, in uh, uh, Christianity uh, for the most part? Uh, is because of this dogmatism. And as you said, uh, Paula, isn't it a shame that sometimes the worst place to talk about the Bible is in church because every congregation you go to, if you happen to have a different point of view, then and I'm not talking about these essentials, but maybe they think that, I think the problem is that most of them are, don't have three essentials. <laughs> they have right. five or 10 <laughs> or 15 or 20. And uh, yeah. I was going to say that, Luke, and as uh, Sister Lisa pointed out earlier, it was either Sister Lisa or Paula. One of them said or mentioned when, you know, there some of the essentials with these people are off. And if the essentials are off, I don't I don't care how great they sound. I'm not in I'm not buying it. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they have uh, uh, a lot of uh, smarts or, uh, you know, intelligent things to say about secondary issues. 
if you simply ask them, how are you getting to heaven? And they can't give me the simple gospel. I'm doing what the Bible says and I'm dusting my feet and I'm going, I'm going to, I'm going to next, uh, next town over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I did see some of the people in the chat room, uh, give some examples that on, uh, they have actually changed their mind, uh, over the years on a, on a few things. Um, but what I'm trying to do is point out a problem that I think is serious. And this is the reason so many of us are not getting along with each other. Now, that, I'm not talking about this congregation, because that's the beautiful thing about our congregation. We've all uh, agreed that we will unite on these three core doctrines. We will give liberty to each other on all other subjects. Uh, and, and that's why we get along and we don't have this problem within this congregation. But as other people that they come in here and try to impose their other dogmas on us, or they want to make uh, videos and expose expose all of us for uh, any other uh, a long list of grievances, but it's all based upon dogmatism. And I, I think it's quite arrogant uh, to uh, for, for anybody to um, assume that all of their positions are exactly right and, and uh, that uh, they couldn't possibly be wrong. And and you better darn better agree with them or else. Um, I mean, there are, as I said in the beginning, there there are some uh, non-essential positions I have that I'm I'm pretty quite I'm pretty certain I'm very confident, but um, I've been proven wrong before, so maybe I'm wrong. And I'm willing to listen, and uh, if I'm wrong, I don't want to remain wrong. So I'm asking everybody here: Can we adopt this attitude that? Uh, Hey, if, if for no other reason, just out of curiosity, hear out the other person with a different viewpoint and give them a fair hearing, really study the other viewpoint uh, thoroughly, not superficially, but thoroughly study the other viewpoint. You might discover that some of your positions are wrong and don't you want to be corrected? Don't you want to change your mind if, if, it, if you could be shown that you were wrong? I've, I've always been happy when someone was able to show me the truth and I realized that, I, hey, I, I don't want to remain wrong. Brother Luke, right, uh, um, yes. I just wanted to say real quick that I think about it like this. There's no possible way that I'm 100% right on everything that I believe. Because I have an opinion about pretty much everything in the Bible. But I know myself and I know that I have faulty thinking sometimes. And I think there's no way that I have this 100% right. So that's why I enjoy talking about these things with other people. If you start from that mm -hmm. premise, then you might learn something. Mm -hmm. Here's a question. Uh, what if, let, let's use this 100 questions again. Let's say there's 100 subjects in the Bible. What if you had to get it all right in order to get saved? We'd be in a real mess, wouldn't we? Uh, uh, thank we you, are. Jesus. Thank you that He's so lenient on us that we don't have to understand every verse in the Bible to get it exactly right on everything. Lisa? Yeah, I was, I was, I'm sorry. I was just about to say we we <laughs> might as well all hang it up, go home, and <laughs> go party or something because ain't none of us getting in if that's the criteria. That's just not. <laughs> It's not going to happen. I mean, if we can't even um, agree, and it's not that we're we're setting out to be in disagreement with one another, we can't even get most of the people who claim they believe the gospel to believe the true gospel. So <laughs> where are we going to go? We haven't agreed on everything in the scripture, uh, and uh, and wait until we get it all right. Uh, it would just it would never happen. That's why the Bible lets us know we see through a glass darkly right now. Even the best of us don't have this thing a hundred percent. We see through a glass darkly now, but then face to face. And you know what? I take comfort in knowing that I don't even have to get all my answers this side of heaven. One day I'm going to have all the answers, and I just thank Jesus for that. That it brings me peace on the things I don't have answers for right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, let's try it now. I, I, I think I've covered all the points I wanted to bring up tonight. Uh, so any more feedback from everybody is welcome. But let's look at the 
chat room here also. Uh, if could you could you in the chat room respond to everything we've been saying here tonight? Uh, and uh, as a, hey, maybe I'm wrong on this. If if that's the case, tell me. But the the, pre the premise I'm saying is. Uh, uh, it's arrogant and egotistical to assume that all of our positions are right. So shouldn't we be curious and when when someone disagrees with us on a non-essential, uh, be curious and say, I want to hear them out and actually really listen to them and really consider their point of view completely. And, and then if if they show us that we're wrong, be be humble enough to change our position. That's what I'm, I'm asking. If, if you think uh, this position is uh, wrong in some way, uh, let me know in the, in the chat room. Mm -hmm. By the way, some of you who weren't here in the beginning, we, we started about 15 minutes late because we originally started the stream on my channel, but it turns out my channel's disabled uh, because of a problem with uh, uh, YouTube. Hopefully it'll be resolved. I hope that uh, everybody will pray that uh, we can resolve the problem and get my channel back up running the way it, and so I can uh, continue to host these programs. So please everybody pray for that. <clears throat> All right, uh, so uh, Brother brother Dave, uh, any more thoughts on anything that we've, we've been discussing? No, I mean, you guys pretty much summed it up. Um, very well said and, you know, it's a big issue. Big, big issue with, uh, you know, not being able to hear other people out on secondary matters. And uh, some people just take their secondary matters so strongly that they are, uh, you know, willing to segregate themselves. And, and, you know, I mean, I get it, but, you know, at the, at the end of the day, this is what I'd like to say. At the end of the day, if you have the gospel, the true biblical gospel, and you have it correct, you have all the core essentials of the Christian faith, correct. You have a solid, firm foundation in those matters. And then I think what's more important is not winning arguments, but going out and taking uh, the power that the Holy Spirit has given you through prayer and learning those core foundational truths so well, uh, biblically, that you cannot try to go win arguments, but you can go out into the world and try to win souls. Mm -hmm. And that's where mm -hmm. I stand on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the, we we you got to get this right. Who is Jesus and how you get saved? You don't have to get everything else right, but I want to get it right. It's not that I desire to just not take it seriously. You don't have to be right on everything. Well, you don't, but but I don't think anybody ever has figured out the entire Bible. And I and I've uh, studied a lot of theologians over the years. Um, just in the book of Revelation, I've st I've studied it verse by verse from five different experts, each expert with a different way of interpreting it. And uh, so um, uh, I'm, I'm very eager to listen to all of your viewpoints on all these different uh, subjects. But uh, um, I, and most of these experts, they don't really consider either that they could be wrong about even one verse in Revelation. They think they got every verse in Revelation, everything exactly in the right place. Uh, and that they can't, as I said, they can't all be right. You have you have four or five completely opposing viewpoints and everyone's dedicated their whole life to studying it. And each one of them is has got all the verses applying to something else. So uh, that should tell you something and these are all intelligent people intelligent highly educated highly dedicated to study and yet they're all coming to these different conclusions about all these things so uh, we you know I, I don't i'm just not seeing a lot of humility uh one other thing i, I want to bring into the conversation uh when we do the wednesday night bible studies on first corinthians uh when we got to chapter five, it really affected me this time. I, of course, I've read the whole Bible many times, but you know, each time you read it, something stands out that did, didn't really uh, have an impact before. Uh, but as I read it recently, uh, I was I was convicted that that uh, I, I was too lenient in tolerating a certain kind of bad behavior from some of the brethren, and uh, um, it it. it I had to change my, my position and basically 
disassociate from a, a, a few people, not based on doctrine. Uh, even though we don't agree on all the doctrine, but I don't agree on anybody with all doctrine. Uh, uh, I, for me, I think I can be very lenient and very liberal and, and uh, um, uh, give, give people liberty on non-essential doctrines, but when it comes to bad behavior from saints, uh, because we are representing Christ. And if someone wants to engage in the church or participate in the church, and then their behavior is hateful and, and, and rude and nasty, vulgar, profane, all these kinds of things, gossipy, all these kinds of behavior that the Bible says we're not supposed to tolerate. Uh, I personally was a little weak over the years and, and didn't enforce that First Corinthians chapter five. But now I, now I, I do. I'm, I'm convicted that we need to do that. So um, how do you see it? Uh, do you think that uh, my position that, uh, okay, we can be liberal or lenient on doctrinal differences, on non-essentials, but when it comes to just bad behavior, and I'm talking about people who are being rude and uh, ugly and, and just uh, you know, unbecoming for Christians because we are representing Christ. And even here like in the chat room, if someone wants to disagree and you want to debate the doctrines in there, that's a fine. All we expect is that you disagree as, as respectfully as possible. Go out of your way to disagree in the kindest way you can. That's all. But when people condescend or start calling others heretics and, and you know, the, the, they, the conversation degrades to that, that's something that we can't put up with. Any response to anybody for that? Now nah, you pretty much nailed that, Brother Luke. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, okay, we're getting close to 11. We started a little bit late, so maybe we can go a little bit longer, but let's see if anybody here um, should, uh, if there's anybody. Oh, Hendrix is here. Hendrix, have you been here all along? I didn't see you earlier. He says, salutation, so maybe he just arrived. Um, okay. Um, John says, amen, Luke, it's a shame. The Bible is clear. Do not hold a record of sins against your brother. Okay, if you do have uh, something you want us to uh, respond to, uh, put it in all caps. People should acknowledge their wrongs against others. Um, yeah, but so much of this should be done privately, too. This is another thing. I mean, we're giving a protocol. The Bible tells us how to address these grievances we have within the, 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 the church. Uh, we should address it one-on-one -on -one privately. And most of the time, if, you, if we do that, you'll be amazed the results you get if you just take the time to, to, to talk to someone uh, and when you disagree privately, whether it's doctrine or someone is mistreated you in a way and you're offended or hurt or something you talk to them directly and then if it, if you're know, based on how serious the problem is you might have to bring others as paul gives us this bring two or three witnesses and then the congregation these we're given a clear protocol on these these, these things uh so yeah if Sometimes we're not going to get along, but that's the kind of thing that we need to contact each other privately to try to try to resolve. Okay. Have you ever done that? That's a good question. Uh, Lisa, Paula, or Dave, have you ever had someone contact you or have you contacted someone privately to address any kind of problem to try to work it out privately? Yes. Um, I've had that maybe a handful of times in the last four years of online ministry. Did you say how many times? A handful, maybe a five handful. or less. In, in yeah. the last four to five years of online ministry, there's been maybe at max five respectable people who disagreed and wanted to discuss it privately and um, respectfully. Mm -hmm. I think for the rest of the time, there's been thousands upon thousands upon thousands who just show up and say, you're a heretic, you're a child of the devil, you're preaching falsely, 
your doctrines of devils. You know, it's there's no social media is a cesspool. Um, it can be a great tool for spreading the gospel and 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 fellowshipping with believers, but it's it's honestly, if we're going to keep it all the way real, it's not that great of a tool. There's more um, fighting, debating, uh, attacking um, than any anything positive. And you know, it's it, you're blessed if you can be online and and continue to share the word and lead one or two to the Lord, then then that's a blessing. But other than that, it's it's a cesspool of garbage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, okay. So you had a few cases where you were able to have these private talks, and and how did it progress? Did it come, turn out favorably for you? Um, you know, the the some some they were actually about you know, the eternal security preaching or, or, you know, the gospel of grace and, and no, they didn't always turn out well, but it was a good exchange. And a couple of the, of the, of them people actually down the road came back and said, you know what? I think you were right. And the Lord opened my eyes and I, I no longer believe I can lose my salvation. And, and he showed me such and such and such and such and the verses we went over. And so you know, there's been times where it didn't get resolved and there's been times where as time passed, people come back around and, or, or one of them might've come back around on a different issue and said, you know what, it's been a long time. I was, you know, a lot younger in my walk back then. I just want to apologize to you because I know I said some mean things about what you were teaching. And now I also believe the same. And so I want to apologize. Yes. There's been some good exchanges and some like real fruitful, um, fellowship and growth uh, but it's very, very rare, especially on social media. Mm-hmm. Uh, how about Lisa or Paula? Have you had any of these uh, private talks that have uh, people have contacted you or you've contacted them privately to try to resolve things? Um, I don't think in my particular case uh, there has been an issue like that with social media Uh, a lot of times if I perceive that someone is off on a doctrine it depends on how they treat others about it meaning I have I, I have listened and still remain subscribed to some people who don't believe in the biblical doctrine of the rapture but they're gracious towards people that they don't agree with so meaning they're not attacking us, they're not calling us names, so I'll listen to them about other matters because I believe they're correct on those issues. Uh, but when people resort to ad hominem attacks against uh, us as believers, I, sometimes I'll just politely go away. I, I don't recall where I have actually, I usually don't get into confronting someone unless they are wrong on the essential doctrines. What I'll usually do is ask a question and hope that the question will steer them in the direction of discovery. But I don't, you know, necessarily, because I don't know them personally, so I don't feel like, okay, let me go. You know, it's not like it was you, Brother Luke. <laughs> I, mean, my, I might come to you if I thought. I actually... um might do that when I have a rapport with someone like that. But if it's just someone, I, I'm just a subscriber, probably not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, I would think that it would probably have to be someone they, you know, each other pretty well. And then there's a, this disagreement or falling out. Um, brother, uh, sister uh, Paula, have you had any experiences with this? Well, not really of people coming to me as I don't have uh, online ministry or anything, but anyone I ever went to with questions um, years ago when I was trying to figure stuff out, I don't think anybody actually ever answered me. It was probably half a dozen people, preachers and stuff I would send messages to. I don't think anyone ever answered me. And I I was so, um, you know disappointed by that, that I stopped asking anyone any questions. I just started going directly to God and just waiting for the answer, Um, which is probably what I should have done to begin with. But um, I would think that, yeah, if, if someone disagrees with you, instead of just coming out and saying, 
oh, this person's a heretic, um, you know, maybe discuss privately with them. Uh, and yeah, the word heretic is thrown around so much about disagreeances that really are not salvific at all. And they shouldn't even be put into that category. And um, like you said about the churches having way more than three essentials, um, I would think that most of Christendom has more than three essentials. Um, and that can get stifling. We're, we're supposed to have freedom in Christ, you know. Um, but yeah, uh, if I ever had anything that I disagreed with someone about, I definitely wouldn't blast their name all over the internet and talk about what a horrible person they were. Um, if I disagreed with them, I would mark them and avoid them the way the Bible says we should. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course, marking them and avoiding them is not the first step. The, the, the first step is uh, uh, correcting and, and talking to them. And, and, and if it's doctrine, if it's core doctrine, then of course we preach to them. And, and uh, uh, if it's not essential, we should be able to try to have a dialogue. And, but if they don't have ears to hear, G Jesus called them swine. I mean, when I repeat Jesus' words, people are offended by it when I say it. But you know, if we identify that someone does not have ears to hear, then, then that is the next step we're told to do is mark them, avoid them, dust off your feet and move on. Uh, but it doesn't say to make videos and dedicate your life to trying to you know, ruin their lives on, on the Internet, <laughs> as we see some people are doing. Yeah. Okay, I think that uh, it's after 11 now uh, on the East, so it's time for us to start summing up our, our program and uh, summing up our thoughts. Uh, I, I'll say one last time, if you didn't hear it in the beginning, uh, that uh, I'm having an issue with uh, YouTube. Uh, uh, hopefully, everybody pray that we can resolve it. Otherwise, I won't be able to do live streams. Uh, and, and Renee has consented to doing this live stream on her channel tonight because of that problem. Uh, so let's uh, have uh, Sister Paula, uh, why don't you go first to kind of give a little summary of uh, your thoughts on the talk tonight. Well, it was uh, good. <laughs> I enjoyed it. <laughs> um, no, it was great. Uh, I think uh, your subjects for this Friday were awesome. Uh, I um, I do think that that is uh, a big problem within the church is the dogmatism, um, and I'm I'm telling myself that as well because sometimes you know when you do agree with the gospel on someone, and then you get to talking to them more. Sometimes you run across. Uh, something where you just can't see how they don't see what you see. You know what I mean? And it just kind of bothers you <laughs> a little bit. But it's important to remember that, um, you know, there some people I think have placeholders for what they believe. Um, because it sounds good. Someone said it. It sounds good. And they just put that there as a placeholder. And then when someone else comes along with a better argument, maybe they replace it with a new thought. Um, but unless you're open to it, um, I really don't see how you could grow so much. Um, and I think it actually goes against the whole idea of the gospel and the way that Jesus wants us to be. We are told to be humble. And... Um, I see a whole lot of pride. So I think, yeah, we need to focus on everybody individually being humble, not necessarily pointing our finger to everybody else and saying, you need to be humble. We need to remember that there's three fingers pointing back to us and let's work on ourselves because that's all that we have um, control over. So yeah, but anyways, great discussion. Another great Friday night and... Uh, I look forward to next week. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Uh, Sister Lisa, what do you say? 
I'm sorry, Brother Luke. I was telling a joke to uh, Sister Paula, Bible literalist in the chat room. I said to her, I said, Enoch, Enoch. And then she said, who's there? And I said, nobody, because God took him. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> I got distracted. But uh, in closing tonight, I think it is. That, it that is, was a good one. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> I was... Uh, I was reflecting on what you guys were saying. And you know what? This is something I, I have to be honest. I'll, I'll put my hand up, you know, to one of your earlier questions about did we ever discover when we were wrong? And like I said, I was thinking about I, the, the, the true believer, the person who's seeking Christ and it's not an agenda to look religious before the world. And, you know, you're not trying to impress other people. You get past all that mess, you know. When you finally get to, it's not about you, it's about Jesus, then all you do is spend a lifetime of repentance. All you do, you're constantly evaluating yourself, not because you are works righteous conscious, but because you want to be in alignment with Christ. So all you're doing is, did, am I doing the right things? Am I saying the right things? But it's not with a sense of condemnation. It's to examine yourself. And if you see anything that's not lined up, get in alignment with Christ. It, was, it reminds me of, uh, of a little child that wants wants to uh, act like their father or mother. They'll see their father walk in a certain way and they'll try to walk like daddy or the little girl will go put on her mother's, you know, beads or in hat and her shoes and walk around because you want to be like the person you love. And it's just, that's what we end up doing. So, yeah, I mean, it's a lifetime of going, oh, I messed that up. Oh, that's not like Christ. Oh, let me fix that. So I, I I wonder at how we get accused because we believe in the free grace of Christ that we're just running around telling people they have a license to sin. And only a perverted mind, I didn't call any names, but only a perverted mind would arrive at such convoluted thinking. You know, they're they're... They're not even thinking like Christ to approach that position to ever say we're saying go sin that grace may abound. None of us have ever said that. It would be ridiculous on its face because that's not the spirit of Christ. So looking back through my life, all I have ever done once I got out of that religious attitude that churches try to put in people. So you come to church and you look like you're baptized in lemon juice, trying to be so serious and impress other people. Once you get past that mess and you realize that it's not a religion, it's a relationship and you're communicating with the creator and he's communicating with you. Then you can rest when you rest assured in knowing, hey, if I die tonight, I get to go be with Jesus. I get a promotion. All the rest of this is icing on a cake. Then all it is is deciding, hey, well, what do I want to do to bring glory to my father, to my king? Uh, and so, you know, yeah, I look back and I see the things that I've messed up on. I blow it and, 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 and know that I've blown it. And the devil even try to throw that in your face and like I always say when he reminds you of your past remind him of us his future he's gonna burn in the lake of fire so you can rest assured in, in Jesus and be at peace and then you can walk out on a firm foundation to begin to operate in the spiritual gifts that God has given and equipped the church with that's you beloved you're the church to do great things in his name and to bring glory to our Father that's in heaven. And on that note, we've got to go. I want to say thank you to everyone in the chat. Thank you, Brother Luke, again for having me. Thank you for everyone in the uh, oh, and on the panel. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. This has really been a blessing to me. And I am so glad to be able to come and fellowship with other believers and speak and talk about not only the Word of God, but as Brother Luke says, our great Savior God, King Jesus. Mm -hmm. All right. Amen. Okay, Brother Dave, what are your final thoughts? Oh, as always, as always, it's a pleasure. I mean, it's 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 a good time to fellowship. I, I'm, you know, I'm thankful for, you know, the input on the panel. I'm thankful for those in the chat, all the input and the questions and the topics we talk about. Uh, you know, it, it honestly, for me, it's a really 
a great way to unwind after a long week. And I just, you know, it's, it keeps God's word fresh on my mind and my heart. It, it, it allows us to bounce ideas off of each other. And, and, and it's just a wonderful time. And so I'm thankful for it. And I hope that everybody, uh, not only on the panel, but in the chat, uh, has a great weekend ahead. And uh, let's remember to keep uh, Sister Renee in prayer. And also, if you guys can, uh, let's just all pray general prayers over one another. You know, let's remember that, you know, we should intercede for one another regardless and, you know, try to just walk in love and forgiveness, even if we agree to disagree on non-essentials. And let's just keep each other in prayer and let's all have a blessed weekend. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, well, um, I enjoyed the talk, but I'm, I'm afraid I talked more than I should have. I wanted to make sure everybody else's uh, thoughts were conveyed, but uh, I had a lot to say about this because this is a subject that uh, I'm kind of on a, a campaign about this. Um, I, I think it's that big of an issue, uh, and I I don't want to come off like this idea that, hey, we need to open our minds up, listen to other points of view, and, and, and be, give someone a full hearing, consider their point of view, maybe you could be wrong. It could come off as, as like a rebuke to everyone. I don't mean it like that. Um, I, I'm hoping that it's more, more of an exhortation, um, a, encouraging everybody to, hey, can we adopt this attitude that rather than, you know, uh, you know me and my in the book of James. Uh, there's not many verses in the book of James you're going to hear me quoting, but uh, he says, "Be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger," and uh, I, that that is a principle I hope we can all adopt. But unfortunately, our natural state is we're slow to listen, quick to speak, and unfortunately, quick to anger. So let's let's try to. Uh, do it the right way, hear each other out. And, and if we do have to disagree, let's go out of our way to disagree as politely and lovingly as we possibly can. And uh, overall in this congregation, we are doing that. So I'm very grateful for it. Um, and I guess the last thing is, um, um, I've never had a strike against me on YouTube for 11 years. I woke up this morning and there were two strikes against me. And uh, it's um, it, and now I can't do a live stream. So uh, everybody, please pray that we get this resolved. And uh, all right, thank you, everybody. Appreciate you uh, joining me tonight. Thanks to Renee for uh, her uh, uh, allowing us to stream it on her channel since I couldn't do it on mine. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus. <laughs>